Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Ship Shape, and it's by Calliope Games. It plays two to six players, and it takes about 20 to maybe 40 minutes to play, and ages eight and up. In the game Ship Shape, you're basically going to be building a ship, and it has this like cargo -y pirate type of a feel, but the idea is pretty simple. There's a trick-taking aspect where you'll be placing cards down and bidding, flipping them over, and then the highest card is going to be taking certain por portions of a ship and placing it on their player board. You're trying to cover up bad parts, you're trying to fill in good parts, trying to fill in your entire ship. If you get a bunch of contraband, that's not so good, but if you get less than the highest, that is good, because they get in trouble and you don't. If you get cannons, that's good, but you have to subtract your points from the lowest, and gold's always good, and filling your ship is always good as well. There's certain criteria to winning each round. As the rounds progress, the different voyages change, and the players that are in first place suffer a small penalty. The players in last get some small benefit. It plays the same way with all players, except in a two-player game, you use a dummy, and in a six-player game, you play in sets of three players, which all score at the same time. And after all three voyages are done, you're going to add up all all of your loot, all of your booty, and whoever has the most is the winner. It's got some interesting mechanics as well as a really interesting way in which you're going to be placing things on top of each other to try and fill up your ship in the game Ship Shape. Let's go ahead and take a look down below with all the components and then I'll show you how to play board. These are all of them that are included in the game, and you're going to be utilizing most of them, no matter the amount of players in the game. These are your ship shape cards. They're all the same, with different colors, one set for each player, and they have numbers from 1 through 10 in them with all the different artwork associated with the cards. These are your scoring tokens. So you're going to have sets of 10, 5, and 1. You'll be utilizing these at the end of each voyage, trying to score as many points as you can, based on this uh, wording here, which is your player reference for each voyage. There is a voyage one, two, and three because the game will take part in three rounds, as well as, of course, getting the rules to the game and the box. Okay. So how do you play the game? Well, the first thing is you determine how many players you want to play. If you're playing a two-player game, you will include a third bot player. And if you're playing with a six-player game, you're going to have two sets of three players that will be playing with two stacks of these. But otherwise, it will be played exactly as I explain. First, you're going to set aside the Voyage 2 and the Voyage 3 trackers, and you're going to use the Voyage 1. You'll take these guys, you're going to go ahead and shuffle them up randomly, and then you will distribute them to different players. So Voyage 1 for one player, Voyage 1 for another and voyage one for a yet again in the top right hand side is going to be a number which is going to indicate uh the uh strength i guess of the of the tile or the, of the player board basically that means is after the second tie when you're playing cards down you're going to get to take the top as long as your number is the highest otherwise you'll take the next and then finally the last one in the set that will make sense but it'll explain it in a second here Every player is going to get their deck of cards, so we'll have black, we'll have blue, and we'll have green, and we'll set aside the rest. No one's going to start with any points in the game, but you're going to gain them at the end of each voyage. Then you're going to take uh, all these things here, you're going to shuffle them all up, and you can shuffle them in any order that you want. So as you can see here, they can be shuffled, and they go back and forwards, and they can be rotated. And then you're going to place them in a big stack here, but because of camera and whatnot, I'm just going to give them in two stacks. Taking three times the number of players, so in this game I'm going to be taking nine of these and placing them exactly as shown, making sure that when you're looking down on them, you just see the nine spaces and you can't see anything else because you want to get an idea of what's going to be next, but not know exactly for sure what's going to be next. Then every single player is going to choose a card from their hand and play it face down. I'm just going to go ahead and do it randomly, but you are definitely going to want to choose specifically because you're going to want to cover up certain spaces on your board. So in this case here, he's got rats there. He's got rats over here and he has rats over here. And rats are worth negative uh, based on your gold value at the end, so you wanna be careful to make sure you cover them up. So in this case, these three here, this this is gonna be probably wanted by nobody because it's not gonna cover up enough rats. I think it'll only cover up this rat or this rat, so it's not gonna be as useful. Whereas maybe this one here, it's got these two sides here, this player is definitely gonna want it, so he'll try and wanna get in the middle because when you flip over your cards based on the highest number to the lowest is basically where you're going to be uh, drafting. So this 10 was by green, which means it goes 10, then eight, then six. So this will be given to this player here, and then this gets discarded. Eight is going to be black, and it will be given to this player here for the next one. And when you basically win, you're going to be then selecting and placing. So in this case here, we'll probably place it like that. So we'll cover up a rat. I'll move this deck over. So you can see that it's covering up one of those rats there. And uh, then this player here, he's going to try and cover up a rat as well. 
And then finally, the last player, which is blue here, is six. He's going to try and cover up a rat, and he's going to want to cover up the highest valued rat, which is that negative three. And so he'll cover it up just like that. After that is done, these cards stay discarded, and they do not come back to you between rounds or anything. The only time they come back is when you only have one card left in your hand. So the next thing is, okay, let's look at these guys here and see what we want. Now remember, we want the we want the highest amount of contraband, but not the we want as high as we can get, but not the highest. Gold is just worth money minus the rats. The cannons is worth the uh, is worth all your cannons minus the lowest player's cannons. And then of course, if you can fill your entire boat up with symbols, even if they're zero here, as long as they're not blank or negative rats, you're going to get eight points as well. So let's go ahead and flip over. Let's go ahead and place some more cards down. Hopefully, you're choosing and not doing it randomly like I am. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and reveal. So we have a 9, we have a 5, and we have a 2. And the 9 is going to be green, so this green is going to get this one here. And it's going to place it just like that. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want, because we covered up those three spaces. You want to cover up your entire board. And then we're going to have the 5, which is going to be black. So he's going to take this one here. And you can always go ahead and flip them however you want to do it. That's also really nice. That was a great choice for him. And then the last one here is blue for 2. And he or she will go ahead and take this one. That was also not a bad play. So they all made really good choices, even though they were kind of playing randomly. And then we have one final round here. So let's go ahead and play cards down again. Let's see if we can get lucky and get a, a, a dupe so I can show you. Nope. So we have 10, 8, and 7. Well, let's go ahead and say that Black, instead of playing his 10, let's say that Black played a 7, okay? And that way I can explain to you something interesting. When two players play the exact same number, and in this case, black and blue play the same number, they're actually going to lose those cards, and this player here, green, is going to take the top. And it'll basically be, if, if green played 8 and there was red, and red played uh, 6, then it would be go 8 and then 6, in which case uh, they would take the first and then the second one. So this player here is going to get exactly what he wants. That covers up his entire ship, which is beautiful. And then it gets discarded. Now, black and blue still get to play, because there's still two cards left, so they're, all, also, they're going to put two new cards in, and then they're going to go ahead and flip. All right, so black has got the uh, the lower one, so blue's gonna go ahead and go first with their eight, so blue will take this one, and unfortunately it wasn't exactly the one that blue wanted, and he's, he or she's gonna have to unfortunately cover something, so maybe he'll do that. And then black is going to go ahead and take this one here and place it just like that, because black played the lowest. If they both tied again, they would get these cards would get discarded and then black is going to win and take the top one and then blue will take the next one so that is what these numbers are good for then that is the end of the first voyage you're going to go ahead and score now by tallying up the amount of gold so this player has four gold so he'll get four points so you'll go ahead and deal out four to this player here this player's gold is seven eight nine ten so he'll get ten this player has got eight and two which is ten as well then you're going to go into cannons, your amount minus the lowest, so he's got 5, 6, 7, this player has 3, oh, I didn't notice, there was actually a, a rat there, that's minus 2, so he actually is only going to get 8. Poor little rat, he didn't see that. But, um, sorry, this is, this is uh, 5, 6, 7, this is 3, and this is 4, so this is the lowest number, so it's 7 minus 3, so he scores 4 points, so we'll take a 5 and minus 1, and this player has 4 minus 3, so he's going to score 1 point. Then we move on to Contraband. The highest one scores nothing, so this is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, which is the highest, and then you have a 6 and you have a 10, so he's going to score 10, and he is going to score 6 points. Very useful for Contraband, as long as you don't get the highest. Finally, a full ship will give you 8 points, so he got a full ship, that'll score him 8 points, which is really lucky, especially doing it randomly like that. And then he got, he did not get a full ship, but he did as well, which will score him an additional 8 points as well. And after you've got all of these earnings, then you're going to go ahead and take all of these off and you're going to go ahead and discard them. They're done as well as these voyagers. These are these voyage cards. You're going to remove these and then you're going, going to go on to the next voyage, which is going to be voyage two here. And what's going to happen is you're going to randomly shuffle them and draw out the number of players. So there's three of them here. And then instead of just giving them out randomly, you're going to flip them over, and then based on the score value is who is going to take the highest. So whoever has the highest takes the highest, and he has the highest. He's got 29 points. So he's going to get the four here, and that's because this one is a little worse than the other ones here. Some of them, the lower ones are actually even better. This one has a cannon of plus three. Then he has got 14, and he has 16. So he's going to end up taking the three, and he is the lowest, so he'll get the lowest number there, which is good for him because he's going to get the three here. This one, as you can see, is way worse. 
Then everybody's going to once again continue. You're going to take the top uh, nine of these, three times the number of players. So here's five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then once again, you'll start playing with these cards here. You do not get these cards back until you only have one card left. Once you only have one card left in your hand, you're going to go into the discard pile or your or your discard pile. Technically, you won't probably have all of these in a stack, but then you're going to go ahead and take all of these cards back and put them in just like that. And you'll be able to use them once again. So there is a point. It's tying can actually benefit you in some way, but then you'll do go through this voyage and then you'll go through the final voyage which is interesting as well. Voyage 3 is going to have, for the lower players, going to have some really good stuff. And then for the more uh, higher players, like this one here, it's going to have some really negative stuff, especially 7 Contraband, which makes it very unlikely for you to get the Contraband bonus. And that is the basic idea of the game. At the end of the third voyage, whoever has the most money is going to be the winner of Ship Shape. Okay, let's come up and talk about it. Ship Shape, Ship Shape. So what do I think? Well, first of all, caveats. And the first thing I've come to think of is gold minus rats. So if you go negative 12 rats and you only have two gold, you're not gonna go negative points. Rats are only valued based on your gold value. So if you have five gold and three negative three rats, you get two points. If you have five gold and minus six rats, you get zero points. The last thing is filling the board. So in Voyage 2, if you have one of the lower cards here, it's gonna actually give you cannons and that counts as a filled space, irregardless of whether you put one of these on there or not. So that means you only need to fill up eight of the nine here. Um, so that's pretty useful. And some of them have more than one, just depending on how unlucky you are. This game is excellent. Straight up excellent. Uh, I like Suro. It's probably my favorite game from Calliope, and they have the new Phoenix Rising, I think, as well as they have the Seas one, which is fun, but I've always liked that game. And they recently sent me a little package of, of three games, and of the three, this is my favorite, and by far, because I really, really like the feeling of stacking the different ship parts, and how I can kind of maneuver it. It feels like it's my choice, it's my fault when I mess up, as well as uh, I'm rewarded for bidding correctly. The bidding phase feels really fun as well. And when you tie, it's not going to cost you anything. You just might not get the one you want, but you'll still have an opportunity to discard an extra card, which can limit, reduce your hand size quicker, which will let you get more cards at the end, which is also kind of nice. So there's always positives and negatives to all of your actions. Sometimes when a plan comes together, it just works and feels really good. And as you saw in the example, I got two ships to fully fill correctly, even though I wasn't trying, I was placing them down randomly. But when that happens and you're doing it on purpose, it feels so good to cover your ship up. Now, covering your ship doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be winning. In fact, if you cover it up all three times, you'll get those eight points every time. But if you have the most contraband and zeros on cannons and you've cut and, and maybe low gold, then it's not going to give you as many points as to somebody who maybe even has some rats and didn't actually fill up their entire ship. It comes down to knowing that you need to have the highest contraband, but not the highest amount you can get without being the highest. You want the most cannons you can get and you want the most gold you can get. And if you can fill up your ship while doing all of that, that's just a bonus. Uh, I've enjoyed pretty much all the playthroughs I've had of this game. It's interesting when you play six players because you have a group of three and then a group of three and you have two sets, but all the cards will play separately, but the scoring is the same. And then you kind of transfer one person from one team to another each round or each voyage which kind of changes a little bit and you feel like you're playing with everybody but not everybody at the same time really unique style of playing with six players and then the two players adding that dummy player is also really cool because you don't necessarily know what, what's going to pop up there has a little bit of extra random chance but you don't need to add that if you don't want to this game probably plays best at i would say three and four players but it plays just fine at all players uh, although I probably wouldn't personally want to play it at two players. I like playing with more because I like to see what randomly happens when you drop those cards down. Uh, it, it's so funny because it's just elegant and simple and yet has so much choice and variety. This game does is, is easily played with kids that are eight years old and up. There's no problem with just playing a card down, flipping it over, seeing highest to lowest, giving a little bit of educational value as far as math goes, and then placing the best you possibly can trying to fill your boat up. That's it. Three rounds of that. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Love it. This game was so much fun and it's going to stay in my collection for a long time because it's a game that I can easily take out for any gamer that's new or any younger gamer that wants to get involved in playing some games. It's a great starting game. Really, really enjoyed myself and my time with Ship Shape and pretty much everybody else did as well, barring maybe one person. If I were to give it any negatives, I guess that 
you're not guaranteed to get any of the specific uh, ones here. And I suppose if you look into the side on accident, you might be able to see certain things, but you're always supposed to look right above it so that you're, that doesn't happen. Um, there's not a lot I can say negative about this game. It's, it's really, really fun. If this sounds fun to you, this is a game I would strongly suggest getting, especially if you got younger ones because they're gonna love this game. Get it, get ship shape or be shipped shaped. It's good.